Hello everybody. Thanks for stopping back by. So, no sooner than I just make a video on something as benign as the sound of silver, do I get a nice comment. Now I'm going to use some foul language because I'm just quoting the comment. So if there's any children in the room, you might want to pause the video real quick and get them out. So the comment goes as this, fuck off all the silver in the world will not help you during a martial law. The Bible is the only way out, unquote. Now just listening to the comment, I'm sure you can hear the hypocrisy he's mentioning in the Bible. He's mentioning the Bible and that the other, and you would think somebody who uh, lives by the Bible and believes in the Bible wouldn't start off a conversation with the words, fuck off. Now, I don't normally bring out the Bible. I don't like to um, talk about something I am not an expert in. Um, but I then decided to research the earliest findings of silver and gold. And I was successful. Genesis 24, 53. First, let me show you. This is the King James Version of the Bible. Okay? And I am going to read the quote. And if you can see it there, good. It is again Genesis 2453. This is where Isaac, who is Abraham's son, is marrying Rebekah. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raminant and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Gold and silver, Genesis. Folks, I'd like to ask you, what other currency has survived? What other form of value has survived from the times of Genesis till now? I could have made a video about saving dollars, man's money, the money of slaves, and these slugs, and I probably would not have gotten any negative comments. If I would have talked about saving and investing in the stock market, it's a Vegas game where the house always wins, I would have probably not gotten any negative comments. But because I mentioned silver, I don't know why it brings out the venom in people. I just cannot understand why. I've searched high and low in this Bible. And I'm not trying to be funny. I search for the word dollar. I cannot find the word dollar. I searched high and low in this Bible for the word stock market. I could not find stock market. I searched for the word, de, the words derivative markets, and again I failed. I could not find those words either. When it comes to the value and stability of a currency, there is no free lunch, people. A nation's currency is not exempt from the laws of supply and demand. So the more money that is printed, the less it is worth. 
while expanding the money supply may be needed in an emergency situation, it is very difficult to reverse the damage. And to reverse this policy, once the emergency has ended, as history shows, it normally and it usually will take a crisis and an uncontrolled inflation before the painful steps are taken to stabilize the currency and reverse the economic damage from all the money printing. What that means, there is going to be an, an uncontrolled inflation and a very painful correction, people. It's coming. So you hold on to your dollars, your man-made money. I'll hold on to my silver. You know, I can go back from, let's just pick a date, 1960. Yeah, silver might have gone up and down. It has its lows and highs. And it dips and it comes back up. But over time, the overall trend is an upward trend. And when you're ready to retire in 10 years from now or 15 years from now, silver will go up higher. Can you say that about the, 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 the government printed dollar? Will the dollar be worth more in 10 or 15 years? Man's money doesn't just have lows and highs. It actually depreciates. Silver although it does dip low and high, does not really overall depreciate. God's money does not depreciate. Only man's money does. Folks, have a good day. I appreciate a thumbs up.